So what's up YouTube? This is Josh coming at you with another edition, the Halloween edition of Homebrew Review. And this time we're going to be checking out Cold Fear. Stay tuned. So welcome back. So it's been a couple of months since I've had the time to actually sit down and do a review. They're a little more involved doing a review than, at least they are for me, than uh, some of the other normal shoot and post type of videos that I do. But before we get into the review, you guys definitely want to know what I'm drinking. I know you do. That's why you tune in, right? You want to see kind of what games we're looking at, kind of what games we pick up, and kind of what beers we're drinking. So for this one, this one is an actual, uh, more like a regional beer. I believe my wife picked this one up for me a while back. This is uh, the Hopsecutioner IPA. This is from Terrapin Beer Company. They are out of Athens, Georgia. Have never had this one before. This one is a 7.3% alcohol by volume IPA. Let's see what it tastes like. Got a good smell. You know I love my IPAs. I tell you that every time. Very good, very good. So check it out, it's got the little Mutant Ninja Turtle Executioner on there. The Hop Executioner IPA from Terrapin Brewing Company. So, Cold Fear. I picked it up a while back on the original Xbox. It was definitely uh, one that I'd never played before. It was one that I was definitely interested in checking out. So, let's get into it. So, Cold Fear is a third person shooter survival horror game. It was released in the spring of 2005 on the P PS2. Sorry about that. Blah, blah. It was released in the spring of 2005 on the PS2, Xbox, and PC. It was published by Ubisoft and was developed by Darkworks. This was Darkworks' second survival horror game. They also developed Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. The game begins with the Navy SEAL team deployed by the CIA onto a Russian whaler ship named the Eastern Spirit. As they begin to explore the deck of the ship, they're torn to pieces by an invisible enemy. A distress signal is issued and received by the U.S. Coast Guard. In the game, you play as Tom Hansen, a former U.S. Army Special Forces soldier currently serving in the U.S. Coast Guard who responds to the distress call. The team of rescuers splits up and very quickly, you are all that is left. As the ship rolls back and forth, waves crashing from the violent storm, you realize this is no ordinary distress call. As you begin to explore the ship, you are attacked first by some freaked out Russian mercenaries and then by various horrific mutilated zombie-like creatures, including your former crew. Through various correspondences, you find as you work your way around the ship, you learn that a mysterious creature known as an exocell was accidentally discovered by the crew of a Russian oil rig owned by a member of the Russian mafia. The Russians came to realize the exocells were parasitic organisms which used other living creatures as hosts and began experimenting with infecting various species with exocell. These experiments led to the discovery that exocells could reanimate recently deceased humans and also to the creation of an antidote to counter the infection. As the game unfolds, you encounter various forms of mutated enemies along the way. They start out as infected humans, but before long you encounter several different horrific creatures with various strengths and weaknesses. Hansen heads to the radio room to request help, but instead he is answered by CIA agent Bennett, who tells him that the member of the Russian Mafia is still on board the ship and must be captured for questioning. Bennett also tells Hansen that if he helps out, that the CIA will get him off the ship. As the story begins to unfold, you learn that the ship was on its way to collect more test subjects and that its crew was accidentally infected. Hansen realizes that he cannot allow this ship to make it to port and that he must also get to the oil rig and destroy it as well. If you want to know any more about the story, you're going to have to play the game yourself. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. While I like the story of the game, I felt like it was a little rushed and with a little more effort could have been far more polished. The opening sequence was very good and the motion of the ship swaying on the violent waves added an element that was different from any other game that I've played. As you explore the inside of the ship and the oil rig, that element is not a factor. There are two different camera modes that can be used through the game. A fixed camera mode, similar to other games from the genre, and an over-the-shoulder mode that makes it a lot easier to navigate and target enemies. The main drawback to the over-the-shoulder mode is that you are unable to run, which you need to do at various times. 
The camera modes caused a few spray and pray moments for me, and with limited ammo, those moments did occasionally cost me. There is a limited carry capacity for the various weapons you find along the way, and even though there is an armory on the ship that can be accessed for a brief time to refill your ammo and another on the oil rig, most of the time you're forced to check the corpses along the way hoping that you will find more ammo. The variety of weapons was good, and depending on the situation you're in, some weapons work better than others. A few other things that make the game challenging are the sparse health packs scattered about the ship and the oil rig. You have no inventory in the game, so you cannot carry the health packs to use as you go. At times you have to make a decision as to whether or not to use one you find along the way or to leave it for later in case you may need it more when you pass through the area again. Probably the most annoying thing to me was a lack of map. As you explore, your mission objectives will tell you what to do next, but without a map, you find yourself having to remember which direction to go to find the scientific module or the main elevator or some other point in the ship or oil rig. So what do I give this uh, game for my rating? For this, for this game, I think I would give this a two beer rating. And the reason is, is because all in all, I found the game entertaining and worth a playthrough. The developers should have spent a little more time polishing the story. The best elements are at the beginning of the game when you're on the deck of the ship, the waves are disorienting you, you're trying to figure out what's going on, where to go, what to do. And it, it is somewhat a short story, so that can be a good or a bad thing depending on the time you have to play. I have a tendency where I sink them. I, I pick games a lot of times where it seems like it's, I sink tons of hours into them. I, I like the Fallout games, the Elder Scroll games. A lot of the games that are just in depth with a million billion different side quests. This game is not one of those. It is a shorter game, so it can be a good thing, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, a multiplayer survival mode similar to like a Call of Duty Zombies would have been awesome on the boat, especially with the way the, the wave elements just add a different layer to the game when you're on that part. But it's it's very short. That part of the of the, the storyline doesn't last as long as you would like and so it negates that element when you're inside the boat when you're inside the oil rig but if they would have been able to do a multiplayer i know this was only a sixth generation uh, game so it, on, online play was kind of in its infancy at the time but if they had did this even as a couch co-op mode it would have really added a lot to the game the lack of the map um the short length of the game the lack of the multiplayer options kind of limits the replayability of the game in my own opinion all in all i would say it's worth giving a go if you come across a copy of it. Um, it's definitely one, if you like survival horror, it's definitely one you should have in your collection. All in all, a good game. Replayability, mm, not so much. Guess that's it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed the game. Like I said, if you get a chance, check it out. If you get a chance, check out uh, Terrapin Beer Company out of uh, Athens, Georgia. Delicious IPA right here. This is the only beer I've had by them, so I can't say much more about their brewery other than that. But until next time, cheers, you guys. Happy Halloween.